Hi everybody, it's Amanda. It's the 11th of March 2019. How are you doing? Monday, not Monday morning, it's actually just gone lunchtime here and I've had a busy morning just finishing off some session work for a few of the people that are doing the level one um, course with me this month and I enjoyed doing that. So I'm actually feeling really cold and uh, you get that sometimes when you're connecting into spirit. It's a strange one. So I'm up here in the loft trying to warm up with a cup of tea and I thought I would just come on and say hello as it is the 11th. Big week, big week energetically. And uh, I actually feel that today it would be wise to try to just take stock of where we are before we move into it. Um, there is just so much going on around the world, politically, socially, in the collective, that sometimes we just need to catch our breath. And I feel that today is a day to catch your breath, if you can. I intend to do that myself. So before really sort of launching into what we're going to be looking at this week in terms of energy, and I said last night I felt there was, you know, love coming in to be talked about and embraced and remembered. What the hell is it? What does that feel like to receive it, to give it um, to a higher level than ever before? All of that. It's going to be great. But um, it feels like today is a day just to catch our breath and catch up as well. Some of you are still catching up with the work that I did last week linked into Michael Jackson and that is fine. Um, there is no rush to do any of the work at all. It does stand as a body of work in its own right, which culminated in the final video, which was the, the healing meditation. It's where it was all leading really. And if you haven't done that, then it's a good opportunity to go in and heal your inner child. I will just say this because I'm getting a few emails in about it rather than repeat myself all the time. Um, I'm getting a lot of messages of support in and people agreeing. I'm also getting messages in from people saying, no, I don't agree and uh, you're wrong. And that is absolutely fine, actually, because what strikes me and what I've tried to explain is that whichever side of the camp you're on, whether you believe him innocent, whether you believe him guilty, you actually end up having to do the same thing. And what that same thing is, is you have to step into forgiveness. You either have to forgive Michael for what you believe he's done and go with that, or you have to step into forgiveness for those that ultimately have made potentially false claims. Forgiveness is the energy that is needed, whichever side of the debate that you are on. And as I did explain in the final video, Michael is the catalyst that leads us to a place where forgiveness comes in, but also what comes in is healing of the inner child. Because whether you've been triggered, whether you've been angered, whether you've, whatever you felt, it's okay to feel it. It's okay to discuss it. It's actually very good that as a society, we have an opportunity to bring a subject such as child abuse up to the light, to be looked at, to be examined. I was gonna say in a small way, it's not a small way because the case has attracted a lot of attention. I mean that more in the fact that there's so much else that is unseen that isn't being discussed. But anyway, it's a start. And I encourage anybody really, whatever side of the camp you're on, to look at judgment, look at your own judgments that you're making about the person that you think is wrong. Because a lot of the teaching of duality, in fact, a huge part of the teaching of duality and understanding light and dark, is you have to get to a place where you realise there is no judgement. 
you can't judge because they both serve each other. The light and the dark serve each other. Always, always, always. And I was thinking over the last couple of days, so I'm being nosy, I'm looking out my window. I was thinking over the last couple of days about where did I start to learn about this and discuss this? And it particularly came via the first system of colour therapy that I learned, colour mirrors, which is very much about non-judgment and has at the basis of it the energy of Melchizedek. And the Melchizedek energy is very linked into non-judgment and unity consciousness and understanding that everything is part of everything else. The dark, the light, everything in between. So... And then I'm also really strongly feeling the buddhic energy as well, which again was in a lot of the teaching that I did in the past. I learned from judge, you know, non-judgment. So it doesn't, a, a week having gone by, I sort of want to say that the spiritual lessons are the same, whichever side of the camp you fall on. It's about stepping into non-judgment, stepping into forgiveness and bringing up the whole subject of child abuse to the light to be looked at, discussed, aired, healed. So it's all perfect actually. Also acknowledging that every single person within that particular story stroke drama at soul level will have agreed for the way that it's been played out. And that isn't just linked into Michael and the story that's going on at the moment. It's what I believe is true generally for all of the anything, any subject around the world which is that we agree to play the parts we play before we come down, particularly when there's big teaching to take place. And actually, sometimes the person that chooses the role that is the most challenging, the one that is going to be vilified, they're actually the ones that have got the big enough shoulders to take, to take that on at soul level. It's very easy to come in as a, as a soul and just play a part where we hide, you know, and we just we just hide. But to be one of the souls that comes in and says, actually, I'm going to be that figure that everybody hates, that everybody judges. That takes a very special soul. So. More to come on all of that, that another week. But there's a lot of people that need to catch up with the teaching that I've already put out there. And some won't get it. And I know that. And it's fine. Um, but those, the, those that will make it all worthwhile. And some of your letters coming in are just so beautiful. Thank you so much. The, um, the benefits that you've received from the inner child healing that we did. I have to say I'm noticing differences in my own life as well. Um, very real and obvious differences since I did that meditation as well. I mean, I brought it through, but I did it at the same time that I was bringing it through. And there have been things that have been changing in my life as a result of that, linking into motherhood and uh, mothering. As uh, very, very interesting. It almost, I, I, can't, I don't really want to say too much because it's quite personal and it involves somebody else, but um, really quite miraculous changes within particular relationship. Well, it's my mum, basically. I just don't want to go into detail about what's happening. And the coincidence of the timing of it, it's all linked into around the time that we brought in this energy so it's big so today I just thought I would pull a self-love card for us all to break us in a little bit to the subject we're going to be talking about this week which is how do we look after ourselves how do we care for ourselves 
How do we love ourselves? So the Oracle deck that I've got is the Self Love Oracle by Janet Tree. I think that's how you pronounce your name, Janet. I'll put the link in the description box below. Okay. Oh, I need a haircut. That'll be an act of uh, love. <laughs> I love going to the hairdressers. A bit of pampering is good for the soul. I have Leo rising, you see, so my hair often turns itself into a lion's mane if left unchecked. Although maybe we all need to be a little bit like the lion at this moment in time. I think so. So I'm going to chop it all off. Okay, card for everybody watching. What is some guidance with regard to looking after ourselves at this time? Just talking about forgiveness throughout this little video. What does that say? Forgive and release. Can you see that with the light? There we go. Forgive and release. And it's actually working with the colour purple and pink. I was just talking about the colours purple and pink because um, the colour purple is linked into the sacral chakra with Archangel Metatron. The colour pink is linked into the solar plexus. And when those two are out of balance and hurt, it's very hard to forgive and release. So it says here, we are stronger for carrying love and forgiveness rather than hate or anger. We can keep our lessons learned without holding on to past hurts. How profound is that? How profound is that? You know, last week I was talking about letting go of the story, removing the story from the body. Who are we if we're not our story? In the meditation, it was all about you are not your story. You are not your story. You are not your story. And here we have this piece of information with this card, which says we can keep our lessons learned without holding on to past hurts. So that's saying we can learn what it is that we needed to learn from that story, but we can then move beyond it. We don't have to stay in the pain. So we are being asked to forgive and release and look at the card number. Can you see that? It's card number 29, two and nine make 11. What is today's date? the 11th. So there's your message from Metatron. We need to forgive and we need to release. And if any of you have still got this pent up energy linked into the whole Michael Jackson story and everything that was we were saying last week, you need to let it go. You need to release it. It doesn't help you hanging on to a sense of injustice and a sense of uh, or a sense of anger or a sense of um, well, anything, you know, whichever side of the camp you are on, you need to let it go. And in meditation this morning, when I was up here and I was you know, starting the week and I was just asking Metatron for some guidance and he just showed me the work that we did last week with Michael. And I, I could see I was still holding on to it, even though I tried to let go of it over the weekend energetically, just for my, myself, you know. There's a lot of people otherwise that are sort of um, entwined with your own energy. And he met Metron just said, let the balloon go. And what he meant by that is the work is out there. Let it speak for itself. It will find the people it's meant to find. The people that don't understand it, it, it doesn't matter. It will find the people it's meant to heal. That's what it was always about. Let the balloon go. Release. OK, so if you are still holding on to that story and uh, either side feeling you know, uh, about it, let it go. You have to get to a place of forgiveness. That's what this is all about. OK, um, I think I'll leave it there for today then. 14 minutes is long enough just for a little high. I'll be back, uh, whether it's tomorrow or the next day, and we'll do some work in opening up our hearts. I'd quite like to do maybe a love reading this week as well. I think it'd be nice to do that in the midst of, as I say, a lot of collective chaos at this time. Have a good 11th and um, I'll speak to you again soon. Bye for now.